Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner covering the theory of Python. And in this video, I wanted to talk about star expressions and parallel assign. So we've just covered tuples. We learned a little bit about how tuples work, what they do, what their behavior is, what you can do with tuples. Let's talk about some really special elements inside the Python syntax itself that really unlock some of the power of tuples. Anytime you have a list expression, so anytime you have expression followed by another expression, and so on and so forth. You can always include star and then some sequence. And the sequence could be a string, it could be bytes, or it could be a tuple. When you include this star sequence, what it does is it unwraps the tuple and includes it in the list. Let me give you an example. So if we had one comma star, and then we had a tuple one, two, three, and then we proceeded with three, Four, five. What this will do is it'll turn this into the sequence one, comma, one, comma, two, comma, three. These guys go there. And then followed by three, four, five. And you can do this as many times as you want. Okay. Uh, where can you include these? Well, typically you can include them in function calls, right? You can include them when you're creating tuples. This can be with or without the parentheses. Uh, you can, but note that if you're doing it with, with, so if you're doing like expression, this is just a regular expression. This is not a tuple, right? So if you tried to do star some expression, it's going to say not a tuple or not a sequence or whatever. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to do star e x p r comma or star e x p r comma to include this as a sequence in whatever you're doing. This is extremely useful for function calls, for all kinds of things, right? Let me give you an example of this. Let's say you had a function add that takes a comma b, and then you had a tuple t, which is one comma three, and you want to add one and comma three together. So you can say add and star t, and that should give you four back, okay? That's the power of this. It becomes super powerful when you understand what parallel assignment is. So we've already talked about you can have some identifier equals to some expression, right? And that just assigns the value of the expression to that identifier. Now, if on the right side we have a tuple, so expr comma expr comma whatever, then a becomes pointing to that tuple, right? What, what I'm gonna talk about now is parallel assignment. So let's say we said a comma b is equal to one comma three. Okay. And what this does is it interprets this as what, what might be thought of as a tuple of identifiers. Okay. It interprets this as a tuple. And then it tries to assign each element from this to each identifier over there. The beautiful thing about this is you can actually nest. So you can have b, comma, c, comma, d, b and c are in parentheses, can be 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, comma, 4. Okay. And so this will assign 1 to a and then it'll try to assign two and three to B and C. So two goes to B, three goes to C, and then four goes to D, okay? Now we can absorb arbitrary numbers of elements by using star on the left side. So this is one comma two comma three comma four comma five. In this case, the one is gonna go to the, the A, the five is gonna go to the D, and two, three, and four are gonna be assigned as a tuple to B. Okay, note that you can only have one of these on the left-hand side. You can have as many as you want on the right-hand side. All right, and finally, one little note is when you define a function, so we can say def function, you can have like a, b, and what I typically use is star args. And what this will do is allows the function to take as many arguments as you want. A and b will pick up the first two arguments, but star args will pick up the rest. So if I were to call this, let's say, with one, two, three, four, five, then A would be one, B would be two, and then args would be the tuple three, four, and five. I think it's actually a list, but that's not really highly relevant right now. Note that in the function, you cannot have any parameters after the star args, unless you specify them by name, right? So if I had some function, where it's a comma star args comma b, and I tried to call that like this, one, two, 
three, four, it's gonna say this is invalid because you didn't specify the B. So this star arg sucks up all the rest of the positional arguments. So instead, I'd have to call it like this. One, two, three, and B is equal to four. I'd have to use the name parameter for anything after the star args, which is useful because sometimes you want functions that take only a certain number of positional parameters, and then you can have some kind of arguments at the end that are only named parameters. Okay, so in this case, when you call this function, you can only specify A and B as positional parameters, and you must specify N as a named parameter. This is a very powerful thing. I'm gonna use an example here to show you how we might use this in practice. So this is a recursive reduce function. What reduce does is it takes a sequence of things and applies a function to each one and returns the eventual result. So reduce is gonna take a function. It's gonna take an arbitrary number of terms. And then you can specify as a named parameter the initial value, but it's going to default to zero. Okay. If there are any terms left, and in Python, an empty tuple is false, but any other tuple is true, even if all the elements of that tuple is false. Okay. Then we're going to return the function where the first item is the element zero the first element of terms. And the other item is the reduced form of that function. And then we're gonna take a slice of terms starting at the second element going to the end, and we're gonna unwrap that, okay? And then we're gonna keep the initial value. All right? And we're going to close off that function call. If there are no more terms left, then we're just going to return the initial value. Okay. So as an example, let's define add. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is return a plus b, right? And so let's see what happens if we reduce by adding the numbers one, two, three, and four. We expect that we should get back, let's see, 10. But let's walk through this. So let's pull out my sticky notes, okay? So the first time we call reduce, the function is add, and then terms is gonna soak up all the rest of the terms. And it probably uses a list, but I'm just gonna use a, a tuple here, okay? If there are terms, oh, initial is equal to zero because we didn't specify it, okay? If there are terms, and indeed there are terms, then we're going to return this function called with a comma reduce of that. So let's go to the next call of reduce. I think we understand how add works. So the next call of reduce, we're gonna say the function is the same function that function was assigned to, so, so it's add. And now we're taking the terms starting with two, three, four, right? So we're calling this reduce function with add comma two, three, four comma initial equals initial, okay? So terms is gonna soak up two, three, four, and the initial is going to be equal to zero, okay? If terms, and indeed there are terms, so we're gonna do this again. This time we're going to have the function is still equal to add. Terms are this time going to be equal to the second element on, so 3, 4. Initial is still equal to 0. Okay, and let's call it again. Let's leave room there so you can see that. So the function is still add. So we're still calling f in is add. And then the term starting at the first element, second element and continuing. So now terms is equal to four comma. I put a comma here because this is a tuple, okay? And then initial is still zero. And if terms, and there are terms, we're gonna call one more time to reduce. This time the function is still add. And we're taking the term starting at the first ele second element. There is no second element, so this is the empty tuple. Okay, so there are no additional terms. 
So terms is equal to the empty tuple and initial is equal to zero, okay? So when we call this last time, so we say if terms, there are no terms, else return initial. So this returns zero, okay? So we return zero. So this reduce was zero. The term, the first term was four. So this is gonna return add four comma zero. What's it? four comma zero? That's just four. So it's gonna return four, okay? So we return four up here. This guy is going to return add of, what's the first term? Three, three comma four, which is seven. Okay, so this guy is going to return add the first term, which is two, and seven was the return value previously, so that's gonna return nine. And then this is going to return the first term, which is one. So we're gonna add, sorry, add one comma nine was the return value, and so that returns 10. I'm trying to cross that off, not, add, make, not make it a plus. And so indeed the result is 10. So guys, I hope you found this interesting. If you have questions, and I'm sure you have questions, please find me on Discord. There's a link in the description. Ask me your questions. I would love to help you and give more examples and improve these videos to make them more accessible to people who are new to programming. If you have any questions on advanced topics regarding this stuff, I'm more than happy to answer it as well. Guys, I hope you have a great day. Take care and bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video on the theory of Python by Real Physics. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord or support me on Patreon. Links are in the description below. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.